What does it mean to run like a girl? This was a question we asked in a commercial we created back in 2014 for our global feminine care business. It immediately became the most viral ad of the year with almost 70 million views. It was the first ever Femcare commercial to be featured on the Super Bowl. And it won a record of 14 Cannes Advertising Awards. Let's review this commercial. Show me what it looks like to run like a girl. My hair. Oh my God. Show me what it looks like to fight like a girl. <laughs> My name is Dakota, and I'm 10 years old. Show me what it looks like to run like a girl. What does it mean to you when I say run like a girl? It means run fast as you can. As one of the global marketing directors responsible for this campaign, I'm, of course, extremely proud of those business results. But as a mom of three, I'm most proud of the fact that a few months ago, five years after this campaign first featured, my youngest daughter, Anna, 11 years old, called me from school all excited. Mom, you won't believe it, but they're showing you ad in social studies. More than a commercial, it had become an icon for women's empowerment. While a young girl understands run like a girl to mean run as fast as you can, Something changes during puberty, and suddenly it becomes an insult. Our goal with this commercial was to change the meaning of words and reclaim the phrase like a girl to mean simply be proud to be who you are. <laughs> now, what if I asked you what it means to you when I say, lead like a girl. So I've spent the last almost two decades as a senior executive, most recently as the only woman in an all-man's team. And I believe it's time to reclaim the phrase like a girl once more, this time in the world of leadership. So growing up, my parents always used to say I have healthy chutzpah. You know, cheeky and fearless. I was a competitive gymnast and later a platoon commander, which became my crash course in perseverance. So for me, doing things like a girl was never much of an insult. I studied psychology and business right here and landed a job as an associate brand manager in one of the largest global consumer companies. It was a marketeer's dream. I'll never forget the first meeting that I had with my general manager. It was 1998, and I was in his office because one of my launches hit a wall. I'm sitting in his office, and I am so angry and frustrated that suddenly I start to tear. My manager, Jim, smiles at me and hands me a box of tissues. And then he looks me dead in the eye and says something I'll always remember. Dahlia, don't you ever be embarrassed for crying in the office again. It's a sign of your passion, and passion is your superpower. <laughs> and then he added, and if you ever work for someone that doesn't appreciate that, walk away. They don't deserve you. I was so empowered, and for the next 20 years, I had many managers like Jim, and I delivered the moon. But it wasn't until I reached the lowest point of my career that I really understood what Jim said and how important it is to lead like a girl. It happened almost 20 years later. I left that company to become chief marketing officer of Asia for another big consumer company. I thought I landed my dream job. It took me one week into the job to understand that my new manager and I were 
how can I put it politely, like fire and water. While I was all about results with people, he was all about numbers over people. While I was all about creativity and innovation, he was all about scorecards, ROI, you know, return on investment. Most days it felt like ROI or you die. In one of my first meetings with him, he told me, Dahlia, I'll never tell you what you're good at. It's a waste of time. I'll only focus on what you need to fix. And then he added, and don't kid yourself, there's no art in marketing, it's only science. Okay, you get the picture. The two of us were like a match made in hell. So that morning, I'm summoned into his office, and he gives me the usual berating, and I'm holding it in, but then he starts to insult my team, and that's when I become a lioness, because I am so frustrated. They work so hard. It's so unfair. And silently, I tear. He looks at me, and he smiles, and he hands me a box of tissues. And for a moment, I have that warm, fuzzy feeling as I remember my first boss. But then I notice something almost evil in his smile as he turns around the tissue box, and I can't believe my eyes. On the other side of that tissue box is a handmade sticker he prepared in advance, which reads, Dahlia's Tissue Box. Are you kidding me? I can take this to HR. Oh, come on, Dahlia, stop being so emotional. It's just a joke. I know you have a sense of humor. I was shattered. All my strengths and values were totally dismissed. My passion, sign of weakness. My commitment to people, over motherly. The problem is that I allowed that to get to me. Fear crept in, and I was losing my spark. But I wasn't raised to give up. I loved my team, I loved what I was doing. I didn't want to quit. So I decided to persevere. The first year, I did everything I could to change the environment. But you can't change someone that doesn't want to change. I was wasting time. The second year, I did everything I could to change myself. But I lost myself. So much so, that at the end of that year, I fell physically sick. I knew that I need to leave this toxic environment. But not before I get back to who I am. He wanted science, and I was determined to bring back my heart and my art to the workplace. So together with my team, we created a campaign that was extremely data-driven, but was also very creative. And when that campaign was the first for our brand to win a special EFI Awards for business results and creativity, I knew I found back my spark and was ready to move on. These three years were very challenging, but I guess that's the reason I'm here today. I learned to stop relying on external validation, because these socially constructed weaknesses were actually my strengths. Only when I managed to get back to myself was I able to succeed. And just like in the commercial, I learned to lead, like myself, with passion and authenticity. Doesn't matter what they say. Keep doing it, because it's working. If somebody else says that running like a girl, or kicking like a girl, or shooting like a girl is something that you shouldn't be doing, that's their problem. Because if you're still scoring, and you're still getting to the ball on time, and you're still being first, you're doing it right. Doesn't matter what they say. I mean. Yes, I kick like a girl, and I swim like a girl, and I walk like a girl, and I wake up in the morning like a girl, because I am a girl. And that's not something that I should be ashamed of. So I'm going to do it anyway. That's what they should do. Why can't run like a girl also mean win the race?
During my research as an adjunct professor and an organizational psychologist, I've learned that what happened to me is sadly all too common in the business world today. In fact, 87% of employees are unhappy in the work today, believing they work for companies that don't appreciate them as human beings. Even worse, 20% of employees are so angry, they're hostile. This costs the US economy alone almost half a billion dollars a year in stress-related diseases. <laughs> Our previous hunter, warrior, industrial efficiency leadership model just don't cut it anymore. In the midst of such a leadership crisis, it is actually those feminine traits, like resilience, empathy, intuition, that become more important than ever before. In fact, a recent Harvard Business Review study found that women rank higher than men in 17 leadership traits. <laughs> so why is lead like a girl still seen as an insult? <laughs> it's not about men versus women. Right? We all have within us both masculine and feminine traits. So ladies and gentlemen, I invite you all to connect to those feminine strengths and dare to lead like a girl, which means understand your own emotions and those of others as a sign of passion, not a weakness. Focus on positivity, persevere, lead with people, not over. Lift others as you rise. There's no ROI without people. You can't have return on investment without return on interaction. And finally, to lead like a girl takes courage. And courage is not the absence of fear. Face your fear, bring out your superpowers, and then dare, dare to lead like a girl. Thank you very much.